I've got a series of videos here on my channel where I talk about building out a home theater system on a budget using Shop Goodwill. And the very first video that I posted in that series was talking about projectors. And not just any type of projectors, but really high quality projectors that you could get for bargain bin prices or at least a really good discount. And the number one projector that I talked about in that video that I put my stamp on that I said would be my approved purchase was a Marantz VP11 projector, which was $20,000 when it came out, granted in 2006. That projector sold for $100, and it may not come as a surprise to a lot of people. I was the guy who bought that projector for $100. If you want to hear my opinions on this insane bargain and this incredibly good projector, then stay tuned. I'm a big proponent of buying high-end used equipment, especially stuff that's older, for bargain bin prices. That's the whole point of me doing this channel. That's the whole reason I started doing this. I just love finding really good bargains, really good deals. And the Marantz VP11 that I bought is pretty much one of the best examples that I can give for that idea. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat with that. The projector that's sitting kind of off to the side right here, this is the one I bought off of Shop Goodwill. I bought that for $100. However, that is not the one that is up on my shelf. I actually bought a second one of these because of two reasons, really. They both stem from the lens. I did not realize that Marantz made two versions of this projector. They made a standard throw projector, and then they made a long throw version. Without doing my research, and that's my bad, and that's why I always talk about research doesn't cost you anything, and I accidentally bought the long throw version of this projector off Shop Goodwill, and it didn't fill my screen. As far back as I could push it here in my room, I could only get it to fill up about 60 to 70% of my screen. And my screen's 110 inches, so it's not like I have a ginormous projector screen on my wall. The lens as well was kind of damaged, or there was some sort of damage in the video processing. The top half of the screen was actually pretty clear, and it was probably one of the sharpest images I had seen out of any projector that I had owned here in my home theater. But the bottom half, I could never get to focus, no matter what I did. All I could do would be to focus and unfocus the top half of the image. For that $100, that projector was pretty much a bust. <laughs> it really didn't work out. But what it did lead me to do was to go on eBay and buy another projector, same one, a VP11, for $150. And honestly, it may become my projector of choice for watching reference content here in my home theater. Placing this projector on my wall was a little bit difficult. I had to lower it down quite a bit because the throw ratio and everything is kind of awkward on this. It only has a vertical lens shift, so no horizontal lens shift. So I really had to kind of move my second shelf kind of like down and off to the side so I could angle it and kind of mess with all that stuff. So that was a bit of a pain, but Outside of that, there's really no other major glaring issues with this projector, provided you buy the right one and you get the one with the correct lens throw, you know, for your situation. But other than that, you know, the feet, they adjust, they rotate up and down so you can level it. Uh, it doesn't have rear feet. It just has a little like knob ball thing on the back. So I did have to get just a couple like foam pads that you put under uh, like furniture and stuff so you don't scratch, you know, like the floor. I put a couple of those under there to kind of like level it uh, in the back. But other than that, everything else is pretty much perfect on these projectors. It has test patterns built in. Uh, it has a menu system with a whole bunch of options. The gamma is extremely accurate you know, to my eyes through everything. Uh, I mean, overall, this is a really good projector uh, for the money. And definitely, like I said, something you would want to pick up if you can find these for the price I paid. It was $20,000 when it first came out. That's the most expensive projector I've ever owned here in my home theater. And you can definitely tell because it is a quality built machine. It's big, it's heavy, it's really well built. And the lens on it is pretty massive. It's the biggest lens 
that I've seen on any projector here in my home theater. Even my no LED projector may be slightly larger in circumference, but the actual build quality, the actual size, you know, length of the lens and the actual uh, components and the glass that's on there, this lens dwarfs that one. It dwarfs the $7 Planar that I bought. And it definitely, even though it's not powered, is better than that Panasonic RZ670 projector and that lens that I had in here. Right out the gate, the very first thing that I noticed with this projector is the level of sharpness and detail and focus uniformity that this projector and this lens has. And like I said, it is the sharpest image that I have seen here in my home theater. It is razor tack sharp. You can see small little minute details in virtually everything. And you can even see the individual pixels. And like I said, it is by far the sharpest, best lens I've had. And that's not a surprise because that lens, as I mentioned in the Shop Goodwill video that I posted a while back, is made by Minolta. So that is an extremely high quality lens, way better than anything that I've had here and way better than anything you're gonna get on most projectors up until you start getting into the borderline commercial level JVCs and Sonys and BenQs and Christie's and stuff nowadays. I mean, you really have to have a pretty high quality lens manufacturer to get you something like this. Now going along with the sharpness and all that stuff, this projector is not insanely bright. Looking at Projector Central, the max output that this projector was listed at when it came out in 2006 was only like 700 lumens. The lamp that's in here is probably about halved its life. It's at like 15 or 1600 hours. So it's about half its life. So instead of 700 lumens, this thing might only be down to three or 400 maybe. It's not the brightest. That's just, you know, it's just not gonna be the brightest. And my other projectors, even that Planar $7 projector, I think on the whole is brighter and my null LED is brighter than this thing. The benefit of that is the black levels on this projector are the best black levels I've seen on any projector except for the JVCs I own previously. This thing with the iris that's built into the lens, it's a double iris, so it has two settings, can produce the best black levels of any projector outside of those JVCs, uh, hands down. It's better than the Panasonic that I had in here, even with the iris that I put on the back. It is better than the Planar projector, and it's better than my Null LED, which has really good bright scene content and really good color reproduction, but black levels are lacking because the dynamic dimming doesn't work that well, if at all, and the, just the overall black level is not that low. This projector, easily outclasses all of those. By far, best black levels I've had here in a long time since I've had those JVCs. So that is a huge benefit to having a lower lumen output on this projector. So just because the overall lumen output is lower, that does not mean that you're sacrificing image quality on bright scene content. In fact, to me, it's quite the opposite. It looks way more dynamic than any of the other projectors I have because that lower black floor allows for even moderately lower peak brightness as compared to some of the other projectors pop way more and make it seem way brighter when you have content on the screen. So you're definitely not losing out. Now there is a caveat with that. You have to have a properly calibrated room, you know, properly treated room. If you're trying to use this projector in like a living room or some setting where a bunch of lights are gonna be on, of course, you're not gonna be able to utilize the full, you know, dynamic contrast that this thing is able to actually put on the screen. It's gonna look washed out. It's gonna look faded. I, you know, it's just the nature of what it is because it does not have the overall horsepower of lumens to allow for a bright image like that to be on the screen. Uh, now, that's not to say, again, that you can't watch this with some lights on. If I have just, you know, my LED lights that are around the top of my room set to the kind of lowest setting or maybe one notch above the lowest, it's still serviceable enough. You can still get a decent quality image on this projector. If you're really wanting to watch critically, you need a room that's properly treated and this image will pop off the screen you know, even though the overall lumen and the specs don't make you think it's gonna happen, but it will. One other benefit to having a lower lumen output in that lower black floor, and I think this is also partly to do with the speed of the color wheel, which I'll get to in a second, but the rainbow effect that is prevalent on the Panasonic projector 
and kind of prevalent, you can kind of see it in certain instances, on the planar projector, is almost non-existent. It's almost as good as my null LED on this Marantz. Outside of stuff where it's really like rainbow effect, you know, content that's really going to kill your projector for it, most normal scenes, especially stuff that I saw a lot of rainbows on my Panasonic, I did not see in like majority of that stuff with this Marantz projector. And like I said, I think that's due to the lumen output but I also think it's due to the color wheel speed because this one, even though it's a little bit older, is a six X or six times color wheel speed, which is pretty fast. Even the newer models of these, when Marantz was still making projectors, like the VP15, they actually lowered the speed. So instead of a six X, it became a five X. And even though I've never personally watched a VP15 with my own eyes, I would venture a guess that it would have worse rainbows than this one because the speed is a lot slower. So you're going to be able to pick up on that with your eye when you're watching content. So really for my money, if you were to buy one of these, I would buy the VP11 because the color wheel is a lot faster. And even though the touted dynamic contrast isn't as high, you know, on the spec sheet for this one, as long as you have a proper setup in your room to, to watch content on, this one I think is still going to give you extremely good pop and extremely good quality on the screen. One other thing that could just kind of bring up, because it became kind of like a sticking point on my Panasonic projector and even a little bit on the planar projector that I had in here. The chroma and color space reproduction is really good on this Marantz projector. It is just as good as my null LED. It does not clip a single color to my eye. It reproduces every color space without any issues. And it just reproduces colors to the same level of accuracy that my null LED does. Like I said, when I put up that chroma side by side, A, B it with my null LED projector, they're basically identical. They pretty much track everything perfectly across the board. So for the price you can find these out there, that's an extreme benefit to be able to reproduce all these colors and all these color spaces pretty much flawlessly without any issue. So definitely another positive for this projector. Now to finish up this video, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this Marantz projector is probably going to be my new projector of choice for watching reference quality content here in my home theater. And that's because the quality of the components are so good and so high on this that I'm getting nearly the same level of color and high brightness content that my null LED can produce. Granted, maybe not as high in the peak, you know, luminance and the colors aren't as vivid, but the big factor is how deep the black levels can go on this and how much of a dynamic image you can get on the screen. Like I talked about earlier, and I don't wanna just keep bringing it up and harping on it, but the level of dynamic contrast that you get in the scene with this projector has dwarfed everything I have here. The overall just filmic look that this type of projector produces, the image quality, is just way better. And for the value in the price you're gonna pay for one of these, it's so much better. The value is so much better on something like this. And granted, you need to have the proper setup here to utilize it to its full you know, benefit. But if you can do that, I would go out of my way to buy one of these. I mean, if you can get this for under two, three hundred dollars, then this is an insane deal and an incredibly good value for something for your home theater if you have it set up properly. Like I said, this is going to be my new reference level uh, projector that I have here in my home theater. It may not be the best for video gaming, you know, if I'm going to game when I have the odd chance to do that. My null LED is better in that aspect. But if you're just looking at pure film and TV content, this thing is great. I I've watched a bunch of content, especially stuff from my video that I'll link up here about reference quality uh, discs and things, as well as other stuff. Like most recently, my wife and I, we've been going back rewatching season one of House of the Dragon and watching the new season of House of the Dragon, uh, Team Black, by the way. We've watched a ton of that stuff here in the home theater 
And not only do I think it's extremely high quality on this projector, my wife has mentioned it too about how good it looks and how dynamic the image is when you see, say, a dragon on screen and it's dark and the dragon just kind of pokes his head out and then you see like fire or lightning in the background. It, it looks really dynamic despite its specs not looking like it would be. I highly recommend getting one of these if you can get them for a good deal out there. You will run into one issue, which is going to be the lamp, and that's going to be something that any lamp-based projector of this age is going to run into. It's extremely hard to find quality lamps nowadays for these type of projectors because they've been discontinued by the main first-party manufacturer for probably a minimum of 10 years, maybe closer to 15, I don't know. At least for me, I looked out and the whole reason I have this $100 one here that I ended up not using from Shop Goodwill when I bought it. The lamp that was on here only had about a thousand hours of use on it. So for the $100 that I paid for this thing, I'm keeping that lamp as a spare. So I effectively got a lamp for about $100 and it's a genuine Marantz lamp for this projector. So for that alone, this projector was worth it's uh, wait to buy it for that hundred dollars. With all that being said, I'm sure I've rambled on quite a bit like I always do, but hopefully this was interesting. And I'm same like my plain R projector and stuff. I feel like I have a, a glut of projectors down here now to try and do some content on before I sell some of them off. Well, with that in mind, before I end this video, I am planning on doing a video about how I calibrate my projectors. I feel like that's a good opportunity to talk about that with having a projector like this in here. But I'm also going to do a couple shootout videos of uh, 720p versus 1080p and probably my null LED versus this Marantz. So anyways, be on the lookout for that stuff. I've rambled enough. Uh, so with that, I just want to say thanks uh, to everyone who's watched my videos. I really do appreciate it. Everyone who's liked and subscribed, I, I really do appreciate that. As I've said before, it's humbling. Uh, you know, I'm nearing a thousand subs, so I'm really pushing to hopefully get there in the next couple months. So with that, Thank you, and I will see you guys in the next video.